everyone and like with symbiosis we're going to take a quick look at biological control which is in a way making food chains work for us in this case we have a deer who is a form of grass control at this campsite and it helps to keep the grass short for people pitching their tents but biological control is much more than cutting grass so if we want to define biological control then we can say that it is the use of parasites pathogens or predators to help control pests and those pests could be any kind of organism ranging from insects to weeds to even vertebrate species so there's some unusual words in that definition so let's have a look at a few of them parasite we talked about in the section on symbiosis it is an organism that lives on or in another organism and feeds on it and typically harms it in some way a predator we've also mentioned and that is an organism that consumes another animal as food so a pathogen is a word we haven't come across it's a microscopic organism that is harmful or fatal in some way to larger organisms and the pathogen is just trying to complete its life cycle it's not even aware enough to know that it is inside another organism and that it is harming it it just knows it has found the right chemical conditions for its continued survival or the survival of its genetics a nematode worm so a nematode is a form of parasite or at least many of them are parasites they are small worm organisms or worm-like organisms so a weed is any kind of plant that is unwanted in a certain area in some areas weeds can be one kind of plant that are welcome in another and then finally a vertebrate is a word to define an organism that has a spine made of bone or sometimes cartilage so there are certain advantages to biological control over using chemical pesticides and what are those briefly well typically it's cheaper because you just need to get some organisms that already exist and it's harder to overuse them it's harder to do serious chemical damage by putting too much in although there are problems as we will see you can be specific too about what you kill if the food chain is set up so that a certain organism needs a certain host or a certain prey then it will only kill that prey and it won't kill other species that you might want to keep and of course there will be no pesticide residue on crops if you want to kill insects and other bugs that eat your crops you need to spray pesticide on the crops but people are going to eat those crops and of course there'll be pesticide residue on those vegetables which is not welcome so a minor disadvantage of biological control is that you never get rid of all the pests it's a natural process and nature doesn't do genocide so as you may remember the diagram here shows the relationship between a predator and a prey organism which of course will be your biological control organism and the pest organism and if you remember talking about competition the prey's population and the predator's population are linked they will fluctuate up and down depending on the food source for the predator that food source is the prey so if the prey gets too low the predator will also come down and the prey can recover So we would mentioned nematode worms, they are simple round worms and many of them as we said are parasitic and they need some kind of host. 
So nematodes that attack insect hosts are quite useful for humans to use as biological pest control. They can maybe not kill the insect hosts, but they might prevent them from breeding in some way or make them weaker. So another example of biological control was in Australia in the 1930s. The Opuntia cactus was successfully controlled by Cactoblastis cactorum. This is a species of moth whose larva eat the cactus. So here there's a picture of the moth and an area that's affected by the Opuntia cactus. So here you can see the larva of the moth. They are beginning to eat one of the cactus plants. And the moth larvae were introduced from South America uh, to control the cactus in the United States too and Australia. And they were very successful, but in some areas such as Florida, the cactus is actually now threatened by the moth. Uh, they have eaten it almost to extinction in those areas. So this takes us nicely onto the subject of invasive species. When you introduce a biological control organism, you must test it carefully. And it's often from the same country, from a similar set of ecosystems as the pest organism. You have to be careful because you could end up with a bigger problem. And this is what is called an invasive species, a species that comes into an area and outcompetes many of the native species. The cane toad in Australia was one example of this. They were brought over from South America like the cactus moth and they would control cane beetles but they came to become a major pest in the area. So here is and one of the cane toads themselves. Looks pretty cute really. I don't see what all the fuss is about. However, the toads release toxins through their skin, which makes them quite poisonous to many other species. Now, there are ways that we are trying to deal with that. Scientists are trying to use parts of dead toad and sickness drugs to make other native animals realize the danger and stop eating the toads. But this can only take us so far. They are also trying to eradicate the toads in some areas. So the cane toad does have some predators such as monitor lizards and this is one way of biologically controlling the invasive species but not even the monitor lizards are completely immune to the toads toxins. So there it is, a fairly whistle-stop tour through the ideas of biological control but you get the idea I think Sometimes we can use the life cycles of organisms to control other organisms that they prey or host on. And this can be through the use of predators, pathogens or parasites. And that's all from me. I'll see you next time.